Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to look at the docu-series that Jeff Wittick put out about David Dobrik smashing his face in and subsequently almost killing him. So we're looking at that. Oh yeah, also like, dislike, comment for the engagement, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, make sure you're still subscribed, that kind of thing. So yes, regarding this, I, mean, I knew who Jeff Wittick was. I think I saw him in a few collab videos sometimes, but the more I watched through this documentary, the more my feelings about it changed. Not that I was ever on David's side. Is there a David side to this? No, of course I wasn't. It was quite apparent that, oh look, the irresponsible, clueless idiot has done something irresponsible and clueless, you know? But I'm a grumpy, cynical British person. So I think in the beginning, I was <laughs> leaning into that it's not even an unconscious bias, it's just a bias towards being cynical, jaded, annoying, British, etc, etc. And then my feelings changed the more I watched it. It's good. It's a good docuseries. So let's go through it episode by episode. The reason I've been keeping all this stuff secret is not because I'm suing anybody. Legally, I can't get into what happened. My lawyers told me not to speak on it. China. It's not because I was covering for anybody or I signed an NDA. Crazy, we both a little banged up. Yeah, what happened to you? I fell off a building. They were all just jokes. I was in a skydiving accident. I mean, everybody's different, but if you think about it, we're all already dead. I have notes here that I'm going to disagree with. You know, my first note was straight away, this is very dramatic. What a very dramatic thing. I'm arguing myself. This is me calling myself out in this video. A very dramatic thing did happen to Jeff. It's really serious. He has, we'll get to it, the more we get into it, but he has long-term health issues because of this. So shut up past me. In the first episode, Jeff gives us a lot of backstory, such as his mum survived 9-11. She was in the, um, the Twin Towers, the Trade Center, when it happened. The only people that got you in the long run is your family. The only ones that'll be there at your funeral or visit you in the hospital is gonna be your family. Yeah, you become your parents. It's terrifying. I said here, he's really made a whole documentary about himself. I guess if something shit happens to you, then why not exploit it? Maybe I'm not the target audience for this because I didn't follow the, the vlog's word, etc., etc. I agree with that second part. Something bad happened to him, why the fuck not? exploit it. His medical bills, even though David's paying for it, must be huge. But you see how cynical I was being, and I think it's because I didn't realise how bad the extent of his injuries were. I didn't realise it. I, just, I think going into it, I just thought, oh, David's done something really stupid and you know, he's hurt one of his friends. I didn't realise how bad it was. So that's on my character development over the course of two hours. He used to sell weed. Legend. The documentary set things up. They interviewed people that Jeff used to know when he was a hairdresser when he was younger and they say Jeff would always do stupid shit as a teenager so I guess going on to do dangerous stuff for a vlog is a natural progression of that kind of like jackass you, you know like not I'm not calling him a jackass you know jackass remember that with those guys who would do dumb shit Jeff also got arrested for trafficking cocaine at one point but somehow got away with it legend then he meets David Dobrik you got that many people riding on you you kind of get a sense that you have to one-up yourself every time. You gotta come up with a new idea and that idea has to be better than your last video that you did last week. And that video you did last week, you put every single thing you have in that last video. And now you gotta top that. But this is maybe where we went wrong. Then I say here, there's an ending sort of montage of all those LA YouTubes I find insufferable. So I don't know why I'm watching this in the first place, honestly. I'm just bored. I was bored yesterday, hence why I did it. And I stand by that. There was a montage of LA YouTubers that I find insufferable, but I don't think this docuseries is that. I think there's quite a lot of substance to it. Why not make something positive out of a bad situation? When talking in reference to Jeff Wittick, we're talking solely about like this incident that has happened. Because I know there's been a lot of other things to happen. I'm not talking about that. I'm reacting and reflecting upon this docuseries that he put out about his accident. Episode two starts off talking about the pandemic and then a wild Jason Nash appears. There was a bunch of videos on YouTube. I never loved the idea of stunts. There's always a risk. You guys love the action. Jason Nash is the creep that tried to kiss a 19 year old Tanamoto in a changing room whilst he was 45. This has nothing to do with the video or docuseries. I just want to put that out there that I think he is a creep and a 
person in their 40s should not be trying to kiss a 19-year-old girl in a changing room, especially when she was clearly uncomfortable afterwards. You know, that's a video topic in of itself, the ways that Tana Mojo was exploited by older men when she was, you know, barely an adult in Hollywood. But maybe that's a video for another time. We're living in this fucking skydiving ranch. Oh! I'm just jumping every day. I didn't check my phone once. So they start talking about doing stunts such as jumping out of airplanes. David doesn't jump out of the airplane, but he makes other people do it for his vlogs. I'm facing death. I'm completely uncomfortable. Jeff keeps saying that he thinks he's going to die from it, yet he still does it about 25 times for David for, you know, their comeback video or whatnot. I think this was after the lockdowns. But why does David Dobrik have such a cult of personality around him? Like, yes, sure, I can see how he would be charismatic to a lot of people, but he's never struck me as charismatic enough that I would want to jump out of an airplane 25 times for him. Someone enlighten me on this because I don't get it. So they do the jumps, then go back to LA, and then David rents a tractor or excavator, some big machine, I don't know, to start swinging people around on like sort of rafts in a lake. Then they get bored of that and start swinging people around on a rope instead. So that's the end of that. Now let's go on to episode three. The uncensored video of the accident is on Jeff's Patreon. He's really making the most out of a bad situation. Fair play to him. I would as well. In fact, I have a Patreon actually and nothing's on there. So go subscribe if you want to spend money on absolutely nothing. Or if you want to see a gory video, then you can go to Jeff Wittick's Patreon. I tore some ligaments in my leg. I broke my foot. I broke my hip. I shattered my skull in nine places. I shattered my eye socket. I almost lost my eye and I almost died. I did momentarily consider going on his Patreon and signing up so I could see the uncensored video. But then I thought, do I really need to see someone's face sliced open? Probably not. So I didn't. Sorry, guys. Holy shit, Jeff. I thought you were dead. I thought I was dead too. You were joking right when we got here. They asked you what your job was and you said you're a male model. Is that a joke, bro? <laughs> <laughs> we gotta drain them Botox before we operate. So Jeff is in hospital and David is, is vlogging because of, of course he would. I'm getting the best medical attention money could buy. David's paying for the whole thing. We're good. I'm gonna look better than I did before. Well, it's the least he can do for almost killing his mate, right? I felt like Two-Face. David came. I told him, you should have came here dressed as the Joker in the nurse outfit. He was like, that's what you want me to do? I was like, yeah, it'd mean a lot to me. No one needed to see this. I'll take seeing Gore over seeing David Dobrik in a nurse's outfit, thank you. You never find jokes any more soothing or calming or funnier when you're with somebody that's really hurt and they're cracking jokes. It's like the best feeling because you're like, oh my God, thank the Lord. And he's still like being himself. For him coming dressed as the Joker, that was my request. I said that would make this better. So that was my entertainment for the day. You come here to finish the job, huh? Jeff's positivity cheered everyone up, including himself, which I think really helped the overall tone of like, how gloomy that day was. So the comment section on this video is arguing about how amazing it is that Jeff doesn't blame David and he's not angry of him and it shows what a good guy Jeff is. But all that kind of makes me think is how much of a cult leader is David Dobrik? I've had fights with more charismatic friends of mine over less than this. What the fuck makes David Dobrik so special that his friend can almost die as a result of him taking it too far? But his friend turns around and is like, oh yeah, it's all good, no worries, mate. What I'm trying to ask is, why do people simp for David Dobrik this badly? I don't get it, am I missing something? Has he brainwashed them? Is David Dobrik the real Illuminati? Will we ever find out? Probably not. Yeah, it's an accident, shit happens, shit doesn't always go as planned but this was not my fault. I didn't sign up to swing around an excavator at 60 miles per hour. David, he didn't sign up to nearly kill his friend and nearly lose everything that he's worked for. Nobody asked for this, but this is what happened. Right, yeah, maybe no one wanted this to happen, sure, but David Dobrik has a history of being irresponsible and reckless and everyone around him is just enabling him. That angle of what you hit would have been about three degrees different. Or if that would have entered about three millimeters higher and been on the same angle, it would have cut your eye right now. And if it was the, a few inches the other way, it would have killed me? If it had gone the other way, it would have cut the big blonde nuts on you and have died. Yeah. Oh, he was going so fast. Dude, you could have died so easy. That is insane. David could have killed Jeff within a space of three inches. That much and he could have died. And yet Jeff is amazing for letting David off. 
I'm not going to tell people to stand up for things because do what you want, your life is yours. But I do kind of think that your life is worth standing up for yourself over and not letting someone walk all over you in that manner. Your life is more important than being on David Dobrik's good side. Jeff goes back to doing YouTube as soon as possible because something, something, we live in a society. Okay, hey, what happened to you? I fell off a building. And then I shot the Oliver Tree episode and he didn't even know if my injuries were real or not either. And he crashed into me with this scooter. Whoa, 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 whoa! Come on! And he crashed into my fractured foot and that was real. Jeff, what is wrong with your friends? Most people start their day, they look at their phone and the first Instagram story would be him and I would click on it and it would be him being praised for something that he accomplished that week. And I'm sitting here in my house in the worst place I've ever been thinking I'm never gonna get back to where I was at. It made me resent him, it made me resent seeing his face, it made me not wanna go online, it made me not wanna open up YouTube. It would just put me in a bad place. I don't think Jeff is actually very happy with David Dobrik and leaving in this little bit says a lot about that, I think. The more of a grudge you could ever hold, the more it's gonna hold you down. The only way to elevate yourself is to let go of any stress or anxiety or ill will you feel towards anybody else. Just the hard part is it's like just easier said than done because I know all these things and I'm, I'm not a kid, you know, like he's young and he will need to make a few mistakes to learn everything. I've made my mistakes over and over again. I've done really dumb shit before. I know the right thing is move on, it was an accident and that's what I'm trying to do, it's, so, it's just so early on. It's hard yeah. to actually do it. I understand what everyone's saying here, and I've made mistakes too, everyone's made mistakes, but none of my mistakes have involved almost killing one of my friends. I hear what Casey is saying, because holding grudges long-term will cause you grief and anxiety, so it's not so good to do. But I wouldn't be friends with David after something like this happening. Here's what I think happened. I think Jeff, after spending those weeks skydiving, thought that getting on the tractor would be a calculated risk and not as dangerous as sky driving. Sky driving? Sky driving? Sky diving. Which, from an outside perspective, might seem a bit reckless or silly or irresponsible or dangerous. But if you've just spent weeks jumping out of an airplane, then what's the harm in going on a glorified swing? It would seem tame in comparison, right? So Jeff is the one who put himself in that position because I think his judgment would be marred somewhat because he's just been doing something really dangerous for the last few weeks. But David is the one that took it way too far as usual. Even Corinna in that clip says, David, you're taking things too far. None of these adults come across as like, you know, really responsible, but I think David is way more irresponsible. Jeff has to go for a second surgery where they are going to try to pull his eye forward a bit. Does this make you happy? <laughs> Fuck off. My face. Fuck off. <laughs> Hold on. I don't know how to approach it. Must be nice still being good looking, huh, Todd? Remember when I was good looking? <laughs> and your friend took that from me. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> it's all your fault. If I never I, met you, I'd never be here. It's a little awkward for both of us. All I want to do is figure out ways to help, but I don't want to make it worse. I feel weird because we haven't talked in the past month. I think Jeff is pissed, but he's trying to play it off as just joking around. But when I look in the mirror, it's just a constant reminder, always. There's moments where I convince myself that you did it on purpose. I want to be clear, like, obviously I didn't do it on purpose. The last thing I wanted was to fucking launch somebody in the water. It Either was, way, it was like a lose-lose. It was a stupid fucking, it was an accident, and it, it's one of the worst kinds of accidents. I'm not gonna come kill you in your sleep. I'm gonna learn to forgive you. It's a lot easier to forgive you when you're around. Totally, I hear that. Jeff is allowed to be angry with David, you can't force forgiveness. It would be unreasonable to expect Jeff to not be somewhat angry. That's downplaying it a bit by saying somewhat. Someone in the comment section, I know you shouldn't look, but I can help it, said, I'd forgive him accidents happen. Yeah, sure, I believe you, but thousands wouldn't. Idiots in this comment section, are minimizing what Jeff has gone through. It's not just that he had an accident and got hurt and that's it. He would have trauma from this, there'd be months of strong pain medication and the risk of getting addicted to said strong pain pills. There's flashbacks to the event. There's his mental health declining, you know, depression, anxiety over this. It's not just, oh, like, oh, I got a bit hurt and that's it. And of course, this would breed resentment after a while. Of course it would. 
I think it would be easy at the time to be like, okay, accidents happen. But then when you're dealing with the long-term ramifications of said accident, it would be hard to not to be resentful. Jeff consented to going onto the crane, excavator, whatever it is. But David had no qualifications to work the machine and he took it too far. I think Jeff said that he thought that they were going to go slowly to get sort of a panoramic view of, you know, the, the scenery behind. He didn't consent to David going really fast and smashing him into the... He didn't consent to that in the first place. Let Jeff have his anger and stop dehumanizing him and expecting him to be this all-forgiving saint just because you like to pretend that in that same situation, yeah, sure, I'd be forgiving of him. But you don't know because you've probably not been in that situation, I'm assuming. I'm assuming it's David Stans saying this kind of stuff and they're irritating me. It is a cult. Anger is an emotion you are allowed to feel and you are allowed to work through. But minimizing it or brushing it off or bottling it up is not going to help you long term. But I don't know. I think he needs to experience what we were doing to really understand. I think he should get his license with us. I think he needs I'm, to. I'm down. If that will help you out, I will definitely go skydiving with you. I don't want a fucking car. I don't want money. I want you to risk your life and you not be in control for once. So he said he would do it. He goes, you gotta do it or else this is all pointless. And I was like, I don't know if that's the right idea. I don't know if anybody should be fucking jumping out of an airplane after what happened to you. David is such a pussy, I don't know how... <laughs> Me wondering if I should take that out because I might get demonetized for saying that. Well, he is, I don't know why people are simping for him. It's all well and good for him to make his friends jump out of a plane 20 plus times and get a skydiving license. But as soon as it rolls around to him doing it, he uses the excuse of, oh, well, this bad situation just happened, so maybe I should be more responsible. Shut the fuck up. Like, shut up. Well, where was that line of responsible thinking when you were making your friends or encouraging your friends, sorry, not, not technically making, encouraging your friends to do dangerous things for your entertainment? Shut up. They're all going skydiving again for some reason. And David does actually do it. So there's some character development question marks. It's six months after the initial accident and Jeff is going for another surgery. Do you know what? I th this documentary was made eight months since the accident. They must have kept it hushed up for a while because I swear it was only a few months ago people were started talking about this and what happened to Jeff's eye. So did they keep it really hush hush? I don't know. That's what I slammed into. Went right through here. And if it was here, dead. They want to put it back in the place that it's supposed to sit, but you can't fuck around with the optic nerve too much because if that gets snipped, I'm blind for life. I'm very squeamish about eyes, so... This whole dock is a bit of torture just for me to observe. I can't imagine what it'd be like to actually be going through any of this. I have a lot of sympathy for Jeff. 10 days with this stitch shut. Close your eye and try and hold it like that for 10 days. It's fucking hell. Fuck all you motherfuckers that commented that I have a lazy eye. I hope you feel like shit. I hope you can't sleep at night over this. Would it be hypocritical for me to say that people are dicks or... So in this bit, he's gonna cut his own stitches. How is that legal? Here goes nothing. I can't see out of my fucking eye. Right, we're on the final episode and the first few minutes are horrid, really. If you just- Can't see out of my fucking eye. You're just really swollen. You have to remember how much trauma you had to that side of your face. Jeff, don't be discouraged. He said that something went wrong. He said I gotta do another surgery. I ripped a tendon in my eye or something in surgery. Another fucking surgery. Bro, he's throwing these things around like it's haircuts. They come in for a trim. My fucking heart's racing. I feel nauseous. He has to do another surgery. I would never work with David Dobrik again. But speak of the devil, he rings David, who comes round and goes with him from LA to Utah. Three months later, and Jeff is going for a brain scan to find out if he has brain damage. People can sit there and say, oh, it was an accident, it was just a mistake, you know, move on from it. But look at the entire aftermath, look at the reality of it, look at all the surgeries and doctor's visits and trauma and depression and Jeff trying to find out if he's got brain damage from this. And David stands really have more empathy for David because, oh, well, David's feeling guilt too. Okay, yeah, so what? Cult, cult of personality. How can you look at this entire situation and have more empathy for David over Jeff? baffling so now it's been eight months since the accident and jeff goes and does another skydive because okay cool 
And again, I don't know how this all happened eight months ago, but it was only a few months ago that David got in trouble for being an idiot. So the documentary ends with finding out, ends on a hopeful message of Jeff saying, you know, he knows he's never going to be 100% again because he has brain damage, his eye is still unhealed, it's going to take years for him to recover. But he ends on a positive note of, you know, well, he's just going to do it and live life to its fullest and he knows he's not invincible anymore and that kind of stuff. But, I mean, the guy has brain damage and the long-term issues from... Dave Dobrik's irresponsibility. They were all irresponsible to an extent, but who was the ringmaster of this group of like recklessness? David Dobrik. So that's the documentary. I just find the cult of David Dobrik baffling. I wouldn't jump out of a plane for anyone. I do understand that a lot of his, you know, fanatical fans would be young, so they can't see how David's recklessness over the years, something like this happening, an accident happening is a natural progression of said thing. It's like Logan Paul being surrounded by yes men in LA and not being told no and doing more and more extreme things. And then he ends up, you know, blogging in Suicide Forest in Japan. And that happened. And I think people kind of looked at that and went, well, how's that happen? Kind of easily if you are surrounded by yes men who don't tell you no. And you get a false sense of self from it and you're always pushing the boundaries it's kind of easy to see how something like that can happen when you're in such a bubble i think david dobrik was in a similar bubble which has now since popped i did see some people in these comment sections wondering if david had done it on purpose swinging jeff into the no i don't think he did i think that's taking it too far that's turning in him into a literal cartoon villain super villain that's taking it too far i just think he's an idiot but am I going to get demonetized for that calling someone an idiot? Well, YouTube, demonetize me, well, then we'll know who the real David Dobrik stands are if you object to me calling him an idiot when he's been engaging in stupid behavior. Uh, anyway, uh, that's all for today's video. I have no more really to say on the matter. So if you enjoyed this video, do remember to like and subscribe. I make new videos whenever I feel like it. Follow me on Instagram and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.